Welcome to the Cube's coverage of KubeCon EU 2024, live from Paris, France. Join hosts Savannah Peterson, Dustin Kirkland, and Rob Strache as they interview some of the brightest minds in cloud native computing. Coverage of KubeCon Cloud Native Con is brought to you by Red Hat, CNCF, and its ecosystem partners. The Cube's coverage of KubeCon EU 2024 begins right now. Good evening, Cloud Native community, and welcome back to stunning Paris, France. We're here at KubeCon, Cloud Native Con, CNCF's largest event in Europe. My name's Savannah Peterson, joined by my fabulous co-host, Dustin. Hello, hello. We may have gotten the memo on twinning, and, and we brought our fashion game. What I'm really excited about is our fabulous guest also understood the fashion game. <laughs> it could be KubeCon, it could be Paris Fashion Week. We don't know. Either way, Priyanka, <laughs> it is so good to see you back on the show. How you doing? I am good. Thank you so much for having me. It's Lovely to see your bright faces. <laughs> <laughs> it is truly a pleasure. You gave a fantastic keynote today. Thank you. What was that like being around your community? This is the largest KubeCon ever. Congratulations, yes. that room was packed. Dustin was joking, he was in the 236th row <laughs> just to get a peek. At least. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is saying something. What did it feel like up there on stage today? Amazing. It was so nice to see the house full audience, the largest KubeCon ever, 12,000 yeah. people plus. Wow. We have officially beaten San Diego. Love it. So it feels good. And we've beaten Amsterdam from last year, so it, it's it's a wonderful experience. It just goes, it's a testament to this ecosystem growing and developing as the world needs it to. Yeah, we kicked off the, the keynote uh, analysis this morning with, first of all, just taking a pause at the size, the number of people in that room, the number of people still outside making their way through security. Uh, this has absolutely blown up. It has to surpass your expectations at this point, right? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I heard there was the overflow room yeah. and whatnot. <laughs> it's just like... You're popular. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's not me, it's Kubernetes and Cloud Native. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I would argue about that. <laughs> Speaking of though, it, do you think Kubernetes is having its Linux moment? Yes, absolutely. I think so many would say that's the case. I think I heard NVIDIA say it today on stage. So. People are experiencing a, a, a ubiquity, a default yes. expectation to see Kubernetes in these workloads, mm -hmm. as in with most workloads, and I see that as the Linux moment. What a, what a compliment, by the way, for us to be compared to such an iconic technology. I mean, I would say that this is an iconic moment in general. 10 years in, yes. largest conference ever, you're an icon, you dress like an icon. <laughs> I mean, absolutely smashing it. You get to see some of the coolest projects in the world. What are some of your favorites at this show in particular? Mm. Oh gosh, that's like asking who's my favorite child. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can say all of them, but maybe <laughs> highlight a few just because you have such good Sure, knowledge. yeah, I think that uh, the CNCF portfolio keeps growing, right? And uh, we're like 180 plus projects and Amazing. Kubernetes will always be the bell of the ball. But a very interesting trend that's happening is the ecosystem developing around open telemetry. Oh yeah. It is on fire. The end users we work with, as you may know, we have a deep integration with the end user ecosystem. We have a technical advisory board with yeah. uh, execs from for Fortune 500 companies. Sure. And the whole idea is to connect the dots, bridge the gap, technology and its users. And what we learn is that open telemetry is a game changer. They love the de facto standardization that it has brought. Yes. They require it of all their uh, vendors now. And we're seeing it. We have this velocity chart graph, which is like the size of the bubble, tells you how many people are contributing and how up and to the right it is shows the velocity. And there's like Kubernetes, and there's all sorts of projects, and <laughs> open, open telemetry. So that's a big one. And of course, I mean, Anything that's helping, like KSERV, which is just coming in from LFI yeah. and Data, Kubeflow, these are things that are helping with these, uh, I say, workloads du jour, which are the AI ones, so they're having a moment right now. Yeah. Absolutely, very French of you to bring in the du jour, by the way. <laughs> uh <-huh>. Yeah. <laughs> uh, impressive demo this morning, I caught that in the key keynote. Uh, really cool, live image taken right there on stage, processed by a large language model yep. on a Kubernetes cluster on your laptop. I mean, that's 
pretty spectacular, right? Thank you. Yeah, and, and then connecting that back to some of the world's biggest brands. You want to throw out some of those names off the top of your head that you can mention that, you know, places where CNCF projects are now core to their technology business. Yes, absolutely. I mean, Intuit, Airbus, Deutsche Bahn, Zalando, Adidas, that's just six names yeah. that I yeah. gave you. Yes. But there is hundreds, maybe thousands of organizations out there that use cloud native. It's becoming the fabric on which the digital transformation journey happened, but rather, it, ha it has been the fabric on which the digital transformation journey happened, and that's why you see every organization either already comfortable with it or adopting it. I mean, there's a reason why Jensen had a big Kubernetes logo uh, in his keynote uh, slides, right? Yeah. It was, if anyone didn't see it, it's a well, one hour and 18 minutes on the YouTube video for his keynote, and you see it right there, because that's what enterprises understand now. How did you feel when you saw that slide? I was like, very happy. I was like, okay, we're both talking about each other. This is cool. <laughs> <laughs> you, might, you might say that it's a community and an ecosystem and there's some collaboration going on. I think that's, I think that's really important. I, I love that the, the open source projects end up getting to this stage. Are you, what sort of trends are you seeing in some of the newer projects that are earlier stage? Well, that's a hard one because we are such a wide ecosystem at right. this point that the sandbox has all kinds of wonderful projects in there. Yeah. You know, I mean, Kate's GPT, I don't know if you heard about that one, that came in, which is basically you can ask questions about your Kubernetes cluster and natural language. That kind of stuff, which is AI for ops, is going to be so helpful for us. I'm definitely hearing that from a lot of uh, vendors where they're like, Great we point. enable a lot more developers and as affiliate associated roles to understand the code base and the distributed system because you can just ask mm -hmm. like a person what's going on. So I think KSGPT is exciting and it, it's more um, also like, a, how do you say, a bellwether yeah. for yes. what's happening in the ecosystem. So that's one. I would say other than that, I mean, Falco graduating is very cool. Right. Super cool. It shows the importance of the security side of the yeah. story. And there too is the same thing, right? Security for AI, AI for security. We have this duality that we're experiencing in a lot of our projects right now, which makes for fun times. Yeah. I uh, followed a little bit on the social media during, uh, during the keynote, and I think there's quite a few people that appreciate it your call out and others asking for, to see more open source around the models uh, themselves. And yes. in particular, I think you were asking uh, Apache and, and MIT license as a preference. Correct. I don't know, can you give us just a little more color and context? And again, on behalf of people who are you know, saying like, this is good, thank you for going out and asking for you know, more open source around the models themselves. Yes, absolutely. I think there is generally an open source washing going on in the AI landscape right now. This happens when people are actually like feeling anxious and trying to hold on as much as they can, but they know, everybody knows that success often comes to open standards, open ecosystems, right? So they're trying to be open, but they're nervous about it, and the way that's manifesting is in confusing licenses. Mm. It's like, hey, this is open, but oh, turns out, up to this many parameters. Oh, oh this is open, yeah. but like only source available. Like yep. You have to really read the fine print. Um, and so but that's why you can no longer just say, is it open source or not? Who knows in which license way is this open source? Right. But uh, we in CNCF particularly are, from, are comfortable with Apache 2 and MIT licenses, yep. as, as you may know. That's yep. a requirement yeah. to join the CNCF. Yep. And we've seen these licenses foster competition, collaboration, ecosystem building. So and business models. Uh, and that, business, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And so that's why, that's my, my personal bias on display over there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think I think you're allowed to be personally biased in this in this particular case. <laughs> we'll, we'll afford it. We'll afford it. We, we allow opinions here on the show. That that's a big part of it. Uh, someone said something really interesting on the show earlier, and I, I want to get your take on this because I yeah. haven't decided if I agree on it. But they said that open source is really good at projects, but not products. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What do you think about that? I think of that as opportunity, right? Love that. Yeah. You build the technologies and then you productize it and that's where your revenue sources are from. I very much understand and believe that. Yeah. That is decoupled, in my opinion, from the importance of documentation and secure, uh, security and all of that that you need to have for open source today because 
it's so pervasive and so important that without that, it's like you're not meeting the bar, in my opinion. There's still lots of room for productization. Docs and security is not, that's, that's table stakes. Right, <laughs> that's right. I was going to say essential. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, table stakes. No, I think that's I think that's really interesting. So you've had some interesting personal news since the last time we had you on the show. Congratulations on your new babe. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> you are, that is very exciting. We did miss you on the show though. I understand you had to be a mom, but this is our <laughs> favorite spot to see you, at least professionally. When your little one is grown up, <laughs> we can define that as whatever age, let's call it, sure. you know, 15, 18, whatever. What do you hope you can say about the ecosystem, or where do you where do you hope this is a little bit longer out? Oh boy, that's such a nice question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, so today uh, Kubernetes is ten. If uh, uh, when Axel is eighteen, it would be twenty eight. Yeah. So it would be still shy of wow. um, Linux's age, right? right? Now. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope we would be just as relevant and on our way to being like Linux as mature, as ubiquitous, as, um, as suitable for all kinds of verticals. So that's what I would like to see, and I believe I will see, mm -hmm. for this uh, project, this community. I hope my son, I actually brought him to the conference. <gasps> Yay, oh, Axel's here, that's so cool. Yeah. I mean, what a city to bring him to. I know, right? Yeah. He's like world traveler, baby. Yeah, <laughs> that's start him young, love that. Um, but it's, what I really hope he will see is as he grows up, the community, the collaboration, the diversity, equity, inclusion, which brings all kinds of people together. And I'm hoping to enroll him in uh, the CNCF Kids Day. Oh, that's Every fun. Yeah, ASAP. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Little one, little Axel doesn't know how much his future is planned <laughs> yeah, when all, it comes to this to this <laughs> ecosystem. I think, uh, yeah, I think that's awesome. We're actually going to have Cassandra Chin, who does, who makes the books on with me on Friday. Such She's, an inspiration. Every time I'm blown away by her. Yeah. There are some really powerful. I love that you just brought up <laughs> diversity, equity, and inclusion. A lot of powerful diversity. In, in this space, and, and we actually have the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Working Group coming on. We had them on in Chicago, one of my favorite segments of my entire career. Just really special to see how people help, but then also create resources for everybody else at events and whatnot. I, do you have, are, does it still surprise you ever how collaborative and inclusive everybody is? Is it, or at this point, are you just so aware that it's a part of your ecosystem? I think the thing I'm most aware of is that diversity, equity, inclusion is a moving target. Mm -hmm. So we get good at something and then we will discover more ways to bring the world together, bring people together. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a good thing. So as long as this flywheel keeps turning and we keep doing new things, we're on the right track. So you're definitely on the right track. I mean, looking around too, I mean, you and I, we've been women in tech for a long time. I go to a lot of conferences. I don't normally see this many women or even just yes. a variety of diverse populations. Can you share any numbers or metrics with us on that? All, what I can tell you guaranteed is that the keynote stage was 50-50. Yeah. And I'm very proud of that. Um, and then the metrics on the attendees and stuff is, are going to come out soon. Oh great, well we yes. look forward to those. I actually just felt it in my heart when you said it's 50-50. And it's impressive and it's because these, these collaborative projects are inclusive. They're, anyone can join and that is yes. one of the powerful parts. Everyone should join. Yeah. Yeah. Because opportunities are how we grow and how we become more equitable to in this world, right? So yeah. that's that's how we need to pull people of all kinds together. And you're right that over time, I'm also seeing more women, non-binary folks in in yes. the audience. It, it feels more, you know? Yeah. yeah. And that's nice. that's nice. It's good. Seeing is believing, too. <laughs> I mean, the next generation, yeah. Axel's got to see women in power like you. It's super important. All right, so when we're in Salt Lake City, what do you what do you hope you can say that you can't say today? Oh boy, then that would be saying it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm trying a to target. Yeah. I'm setting a target. Well, I mean, you know, but there could be some sure. things in the pipeline that aren't confidential. No, yeah. I do think things will move forward and we'll have a lot of progress made in the next six months. I just look at the demo in Chicago that I yep. did to the demo I did here. Yep. A lot changed, even in just my own understanding of the stack yeah. and how the stack evolved. So I expect the same in that there will be updates, there will be new ways to in interact with this technology. In anything you think will be a solved problem uh, by then? <laughs> I, you know, the, the observability is one of the things we've heard a lot about, certainly in the, in the keynote it came up. Yeah. There's still asks around that. We, Our last guest actually, uh, Dinah Trace, was talking about open telemetry. Is, is that or something like that, do you think might be a solved problem by 
Salt Lake City? So I think you can't say something is going to be a solved problem because even if you figure out the mechanics of something, a new workload will come along and ta-da, yeah. <laughs> restart. So we're, all, we're always on that flywheel, right? Yeah. But I think we will have made a lot of progress, yes. I think it'll be interesting the coming together of uh, security and uh, observability. Okay. Yeah, I can imagine us seeing more and more there. Yeah. And that whole duality around security for AI, AI for security, I think we will see more there too. I like it. That's my expectation. I think you're right. Yeah. I think there's a lot trending that way and definitely a part of the hallway track, just listening to folks yeah. talking about that. No, I think, I think that's important. I'm curious from a strong woman perspective, sorry Dustin, <laughs> if, if uh, what would you say to the young women, or uh, women of any age, frankly, sure. who might be watching and are considering a career, or considering joining this ecosystem, what's your advice? I think my advice is follow your heart and go for whatever you want. If you like seeing the work we do over here, then come along, join in. Nothing will stop you, but, sorry, I was going to say nothing will stop you but yourself, but then I was like, that's not really fair, so I can't really say that. But you need to think in that way, mm -hmm. that nothing will stop you but yourself. Like, if you don't take that step for a step, it's definitely not happening, right? And so, there are challenges along the way, of course, but just go where you want to go. You're going to break through walls. It's going to happen. Gives me all the Beautifully feels. Beautifully said, yeah. yeah. It gives me all the feels. And, and it is relevant. I've got two yeah. little girls, yeah. and uh, one of which is dying to be a software engineer. We oh. actually ran into Vent Surf on our flight from to Paris, oh, yeah. uh, well, from Austin to Washington, D.C., and I pointed out and said, you know, he invented the internet. And she was like, what, what? Dad? <laughs> and she went and talked to Vent Surf, oh. who, told, who encouraged her oh to follow God. her dreams and yes. become a software Just engineer. Yes, do it. <laughs> no, it's beautiful. Okay, so I knew this was going to be the most fashionable segment of the show. <laughs> I was not prepared for it to be the most heartwarming. <laughs> that is, oh my gosh, I love that. Well, Priyanka, it is such a pleasure to have you every single time. And, and I really look forward to having you back in Salt Lake. Can't wait to see those demos. Can't wait to see what you're wearing. <laughs> it's all just fabulous. And, and shout out to Axel. He must be very proud of his mom, even at that little tiny stage where he's at now. Thank you so much. I had tons of fun. We love it. We absolutely love to have you. Dustin, always a pleasure matching and co-hosting <laughs> with you, dear. And thank all of you for tuning in live to our coverage here at KubeCon, CloudNativeCon in Paris, France. My name is Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for enterprise tech news.